Listen to this, Herb. Okay. I'm skating down the ice, knitting a sweater. A sweater? Yeah. And a penguin cop stops me. What'd the cop say, Don? He said, pull over. And I said, no, cardigan. <laughs> Can't believe you're laughing at one of my jokes. <gasps> I'm laughing because there's a shark coming up behind you. Well, maybe he wants to see Beekman, too. The largest lizard in the world is the Komodo dragon, which can reach a length of 10 feet and weigh over 300 pounds. I'm Beekman, and you've just broken into Beekman's world. an air guitar. <laughs> I guess you're right. I might as well tighten it on. Oh, mama, I've got the down home. Dirt road, tar paper shack, red beans and rice, yeah. and gut bucket blues. Do me right with a question, blind lemon Phoebe. <gasps> Katarina Boyer of Edina, Minnesota writes, Dear Beekman, what do scientists study at the North and South Poles? There is nothing there but ice and snow. Why, that's a brilliant question, Katarina. <laughs> but there's more to the North and South Poles than meets the icicle. <laughs> you know, I like white play a little more than the next guy, but this is ridiculous. Anyway, pray continue, Beak Man at a House. Our special guest knows all there is to know about polar exploration. The first man to fly over both the North and South Pole. He's old. He's bold. He's cold. And he's dead as a doornail. <laughs> <laughs> the late, great Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd. <laughs> well, I just took a pole and found out that I'm real Admiral Byrd. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen many a polar bear, but this guy is polar unbearable. <laughs> Welcome, Admiral Bird. That's real Admiral Bird, Petunia. Um, why do they call you <laughs> Rear Admiral, babe? You know, son, I have no idea. Obviously. <laughs> Admiral! Um, <laughs> rear Admiral Bird. <laughs> we defrosted you from the dead to find out about the North and South Poles. Yeah, what are they anyway? Sugar dumplings? Behold the Earth. Looks more like the moon to me. <laughs> I'll ignore that crack. <laughs> but a butt! Notice here, the globe is divided by lines that run north and south. We call these lines... Lines of longitude. The North Pole is up here. It's where all the lines of longitude meet in the North. And the South Pole is here, where all the lines of longitude meet in the South. Ahem. Has your reel been made, Admiral? Well, not like yours. <laughs> Well, then, hush, puppy, and I'll do the explaining. The North Pole lies within the region bounded by the Arctic Circle. And the South Pole is on the continent of Antarctica, right here. Both are desolate, forbidden places of eternal ice and snow. So, uh, were you the first guy to go to the North and the South Poles? <laughs> Why, no, my sugar. Magnolia? I flew over the North Pole in 1926 and the South Pole in 1929. But explorers had made it to both poles on foot years earlier. Because they weren't birds and couldn't fly. Hey, thank you. 
But if there's just ice and snow, why would anybody want to go there? Oh, because natural history is trapped in that ice and snow. Scientists use hollow drills to drill deep down into the poles and pull out core samples. Well, think of this as a history book. Each year out a different page. I'm not getting it. Oh, well, there's a surprise. Think of it this way, my little mint julep. Each year adds an additional thickness of ice to the poles. Now, this layer here shows us an unusually warm winter, probably only about 30 degrees below zero. <laughs> and this dirty layer right here... Oh, it's where smog and industrial pollution finally made their way to the poles. Live and learn! Other than drilling into the ice, why are scientists freezing their patooties off at the poles? Cause there are many fascinating things to learn. While we can study the flora and fauna and find out just what a patootie is. You're walking around with that admirable rear and you don't know what a patootie is? Hmm. Rear Admiral, how much ice is there in the Arctic and Antarctica? Hmm. Yo, roll in the Rear Admiral Bogoscope, you hear? The ice covering Antarctica alone is one and a half times the size of these United States. If all that ice melted, the sea level around the world would rise by about 200 feet. Coastal cities such as London, New York, and Savannah, Georgia would be underwater. And here's another bodacious fact. There's no land at the North Pole. Yeah, it's just a floating raft of ice. <laughs> That's why submarines can sail beneath it. Well, now, if you all will excuse me, it's time for this bird to fly south for the winter. Well, keep cool. Bye-bye, birdie. Y'all come back now, yeah. Wow, Beaky. You just missed a little visit by Admiral Richard E. Bide. While the Great Polar Explorer was here. Uh, the Great Polar Explorer was here? Oh, man, I miss all the good stuff. Yeah, he told us about poles and why scientists study them. Hmm. Did he tell you why astronomers go there? No. Since the poles are thousands of miles from the lights of the cities and there's so little pollution, astronomers can get heavenly views of the stars and the planets. Wow, there's Orion. Wow, there's Orion O'Neill. <laughs> Scientists from around the world live and study in the polar regions. And here's the best part. Thanks to the Antarctic Treaty, Antarctica can only be used for peaceful purposes. No armies can go there except to help scientific expeditions. And scientists have to share everything they learn there. <laughs> That's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Whoever thought the land of ice and snow could melt the cold hearts of so many nations. <laughs> So, Katerina Boyer of Edina, Minnesota. That's the deal on pools. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> Coming up next, things get downright ugly when Phoebe meets and greets a sea lamprey. So, stick around for an eely, eely big shoe. Bateman's World will be right back. Now, back to Beatman's World. On your mark, get set, go! It's time to put wire your head. Here he is, the conductor of conundrums, the brakeman of the Baroque, the back scale of the tigers by the tail. The one! Show me! The Beatman! You hold him, I'll mold him. Let's circle dance. Everyone in the ring for the Hokey Pokey! Question. Skylar battles 
of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, right? Dear Beekman, which planet is the hottest? Answer, the hottest planet in our solar system is Venus. Daytime temperatures on Venus reach 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Woo! Oh, that's 482 degrees Celsius. But it's a dry heat, perfect for that wintertime vacation getaway. Fact, no mammal moves slower than this one, the sloth. And young sloths aren't too bright either. Yeah. They sometimes mistake their own arms for tree branches, grab them, and crash to the ground. Ha! No animal in the entire universe could be that dumb. Yeah, I know. Now, would you hand me that tuxedo? Uh, that tuxedo is me. Oh, is it for rent? Question! How come other people's smells are bad? But your own... Oh, oh that <laughs> disgusting thought, Phoebe. Because... They creep! They crawl! They're ugly! That's all! It's time for... Those Disgusting Animals! Salutations, good people, and welcome to Those Disgusting Animals! Lesseter, I have a very special treat for you today. Oh, Lester, you pathetic schmuck. I have a special treat for you. Well, not this time, Fee Beef Wellington. No more disgusting animals for moi. Do I look that stupid? Yeah, you do. Fair enough. But today, the rat shoe is on the other foot. Because I have a disgusting animal for you. Lester, I work with a disgusting animal every day. Nothing he shows me could possibly gross me out. Oh, yeah? Not even this? The fetching and always adorable sea lamprey. Lampreys are fish with eel-like bodies that can grow as long as three feet. Lampreys attach themselves to fish and suck out their blood and bodily fluids. Mm. Mm. Uh, those are disgusting. I have not yet begun to... Oh, lamprey, say ah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Horn-like teeth on the inside of its mouth help the lamprey hold on to its victim. Hey, baby. Teeth on the lamprey's tongue rip open the victim's skin so it can suck out its supper. Ugh, oh, I'm gonna be sick. You know, Phoebes, at one time, New Englanders considered lampreys a great delicacy. Oh. You've got to admit, they really do look yummy. Oh, gross! Get away from me! Oh, now you've hurt its feelings. Oh, lamprey. Well, I'm afraid it's like that on the lamprey, so join us next time for Those Disgusting Animals. Coming up next... They twist, they twirl, and they seldom hurl. So don't you spin away. Beekman's World will be right back. And now, back to Beekman's World. I'm high on curiosity. <laughs> Send up a question, please, Phoebe. Oh, uh, answering this will be a tall order. Logan and Cameron School. I meant to do that. Uh-huh. As I was saying, Logan and Cameron Klein of Woodbridge, Connecticut want to know how ice skaters spin around so fast. Easy, like this. Best of all, it clears some room for my next meal. Well, oh, oh, oh. well that was charming. <laughs> now, 
I have to explain something called rotational inertia before I can spew forth the answer to Logan and Camera's question. Rotational inertia. The problem of rotational inertia. It tends to remain at rest. Unless it tends to remain rotating. Unless interrupted. What the nerdy professor was trying to say is that when something is spinning, it tends to keep spinning until something stops it from spinning. <laughs> Absolutely, lutely, Phoebus interrupts us. And if it's not spinning, it's not going to be spinning until something starts it spinning. <laughs> You're making my head spin and my stomach tight. Good. We're even. Let's have a contest. <gasps> oh. Behold, my patented Beekman Rotational Aerodynamic Thingy, or BRAT for short. Lester, do you think you can spin your thingy faster than Phoebe can spin her thingy? Well, I've had a lot of practice spinning my thingy, and quite frankly, Phoebe being a girl and all, this contest is no contest. What'd you see about that, flea face? Ooh. Spin this! Let's get ready to rotate! Remember, according to the rules of the International Thingy Twirling Federation, all thingies must be the same size and weight, which these are. Okay, thingies up and at the sound of the bell, come out twirling! Beaten by a girl. <laughs> no, Lester, you got beaten by science. And a girl. <laughs> Let's go to the Beak Blimp replay! You'll notice on Lester's thingy, the weights are as far apart on the pole as they can be. The further apart they are, the greater the rotational inertia, and the harder it is for Lester to get his thingy spinning. Phoebe's thingy, on the other hand, has the weights closer together. That gives her thingy less rotational inertia, so she can get her thingy spinning faster. This is really interesting. It is, isn't it? Yeah, I can smell an egg roll I ate six weeks ago. Ugh. Beekman, what do our thingies have to do with spinning ice skaters? Only everything. When ice skaters start their spins, their arms are outstretched. By pulling their arms in, they decrease their rotational inertia. That speeds up their spectacular spins. Ice skaters aren't the only athletes who use rotational inertia. Divers tuck in tight to get in more twists and turns before they splash down. And the man on the flying trapeze couldn't fly through the air with the greatest of ease if he didn't minimize his rotational inertia by rolling himself into a tight, fast-spinning ball. So, Logan and Cameron... And all of your kin. That's how skaters use science to speed up their spin. Crystal Deal of Taylorsville, Georgia writes, Dear Beekman, how can we keep having seedless grapes year after year when there are no seeds to replant? Hey, grape question, Crystal. Definitely the best of the bunch. <laughs> we'll tell you the raisin right after this. It'll be crystal clear. Beekman's World. We'll be right back. And now, back to Beekman's World. So, Beekman, seedless grapes, talk to me. 
Since seedless grapes have no seeds to replant, growers take cuttings from other seedless grape vines and root them. Well, where did they get the first ones from? Nobody knows for sure. But they were probably a mistake of nature. <laughs> People living in what we now call Iraq and Afghanistan grew them thousands of years ago. Speaking of Afghanistan, how's about some lunch? Lester, what could Afghanistan possibly have to do with lunch? Jeez, does everything have to have a reason around here? I'm starved! I'm Beekman! Oh, and I'm Phoebe! See you next time on Beekman's World! I got the results on my vocational test today. Aha, uh -huh. that's the test that tells you what job you'd be good at. Yeah. So, what job would you be good at? Standing next to you and watching TV. Ha! You'll never find a job like that. Yeah, you're right. I guess I'll just stand next to you and turn off Beekman. Ooh, good job. 